This is what SMS phone records look like when you import them into i2 Analyst Notebook. What's going on, analysts? We received the question in the comments section of one of our recent tips and tutorials video asking, how would you import SMS messages between phones on a timeline that displays the messages between phones? So without wasting any more time, let's dive right into it. Here's a small sample extract from a digital forensic extraction device like Celebrite or MSAB that contains SMS messages either sent or received by this device. Now typically, extractions contain much larger amounts of data. For the sake of this demonstration, we'll be using a very small sampling of that data, but the process is still the same. The key data elements we're going to require are date and time, target device phone number, destination phone, directionality, and of course, text message content. Let's go ahead and import the file. From the home ribbon, click the import tool and select import from file. We're going to select our source Excel file and click open. Then we're going to click create new specification and click OK. Let's go through the import wizard. Click next. I'm going to specify that we want to extract column headers from row one and then click next. Now in this demo, we're not modifying any of the data, so click Next to select Layout Design. The design we're going to select for this timeline chart will be the Sequence of Telephone Calls. Click Next. Now we're going to modify this layout to include an event frame to display our SMS messages. Click the Add Entity drop-down and select Event Frame. And let's drop it here. Let's get rid of this link by selecting it and pressing the delete key. Select the add new link and drag it from the first device to the event frame. Then select add new link again and drag it from the event frame to the second device. Let's configure the contents of our chart. We're going to drag the subject phone column or our target phone on top of our first phone. Then we're going to drag the phone number column or our destination phone on top of our second phone. This will set the identity for these entities. For the event frame, we're going to drag the record ID column to the identity section. We're going to set an appropriate icon in the type section. Let's find the text message icon. For the label, I want it to display the value in the type column. It will indicate iMessage because it's the record type in the data set. Let's go ahead and set the date and time sections by dragging the timestamp column to the date section and to the time section. Let's set controlling to yes. This will ensure our event frames will always be in sequential order. To display the contents of the text message or SMS message, let's go ahead and drag the SMS text description column to the description section of the event frame. The last thing we want to set is the directionality on our links. We want to make sure that the arrows are pointing correctly based on whether the direction column indicates outgoing or incoming. Select the link above the event frame. I'm not going to label these links, so I'm going to select the label section and press the delete key. I'm going to do the same with the link below the event frame. Let's go back to the first link and select it. Let's configure the direction by clicking the ellipsis or the three dots. We're going to click single column and specify which data column we want to base the direction on. In this case, we're going to select direction. We're going to specify that if the value in this column is outgoing, we want the arrow pointing from the subject phone to the destination phone. And if the value is incoming, then we want the arrow pointing from the destination phone to the subject phone. Click OK. Now let's go ahead and select the second link and repeat the same steps to set the direction. Click OK. We're done assigning the data columns, so click Next. It looks like our timestamp column has auto-formatted properly since I'm not seeing any yellow warning symbols. Let's go ahead and click Import. I'm going to save this import specification and name it SMS Message Demo 2 and click Save. Click Close to complete the import. Now if you're finding value in this video, click that like. 
It really helps us to grow this channel. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Let me just fit this to window. It's not exactly the way I want my chart to look, so let's fix a few things. I don't like the segment wire on the timeline to bend or divert like it is right now. What I can do is hit Ctrl A to select all and right click any selected item, then select Combine Properties and under Style, Links, Connection, I'm going to set the segment wiring height to not diverted. Click OK. Now I want to arrange the event frames so that they're grouped together based on when the messages were transmitted or received. Let's go to the Arrange ribbon and under the Theme Line layouts, select Grouped Theme Line. There, that's better. Except the event frames are overlapping. Let's go ahead and fix this by selecting Group by Time. There you go. Looks pretty good so far, but I don't like how big the space is between the groups. I want to reduce this, so let's click the Layout Setup icon in the toolbar and go to the Group by Time layout. Here we see that the messages or event frames are grouped in segments of one hour. If we had a lot more data, we may want to group these items in segments of days or weeks. In this case, we'll keep the groupings as is. Notice that the groups are separated by 10 centimeters. That's the space between here and here. Let's go ahead and reduce that value to 5 centimeters. Click OK. When I click Group by Time again, it's now spaced them closer together. In our case, I'm really interested in a specific time frame of when our incident took place. So let's turn on the time bar in the view ribbon. Because the actual time frame of the incident was around 11 a.m. on Sunday, January 8th, notice here that Sunday, January 8th, 12 p.m. is here. I might want to highlight this in my chart. But before I do, let's go ahead and highlight our subject phone. Select our subject phone, and in the style ribbon, we're going to set a red frame. I'm going to set the line color to red, and set the line width to 5 points. Let's go ahead and highlight the time frame of our transactions of interest. Let's go to our palette and select the box item. Let's say this was a robbery investigation. Let's set the entity type to robbery. Let's search for a category, type crime, and select robbery. Then we're going to draw the box around the time frame of our transaction of interest. Right click on our box and under display, Let's turn off the label. There you go. That's how to import SMS messages on a timeline chart. I hope you found this helpful. Comment below if you have any requests for a specific tutorial. Thanks for checking out this episode from the All About Analysis channel. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like, hit subscribe, click that bell, and don't forget to share this video. See you next time.